Hello, my name is Jeff Kroll. As a child, I spent many hours playing on sandbars and in tide pools by the ocean. And as I'd walk over by those tide pools and sandbars, I'd stop by this cove and say, what's beneath the surface of those waters in that cove? So I got my mass fins and snorkel and started to explore. Later on, I became involved with scuba diving, and I haven't stopped exploring the ocean since. It's a passion of mine, and I want to share this passion with you. Today, we're going to be exploring the marine ecosystems of New England. We're going to explore exciting habitats, and you're going to be right there with me, swimming along to see all the neat and fascinating creatures that we'll be discovering. If there's one word that best describes the marine ecosystem of New England, it is the word dynamic. For this environment is constantly changing and constantly challenging. For the animals to survive, they must adapt. So there's going to be four different areas that we're going to be exploring today. The rocky coastline in the distance, the shallow rocky shore area in the front, the sandy bottom area, and when we swim over, it's going to be like swimming over a desert. And over by my right, we'll be swimming over kelp heads and vegetation. Now, as we visit each of these areas, notice the similarities and differences. If you were a marine animal, which one would you like to be, and in which habitat would you like to live? Also, too, notice the environmental factors that play an important role in each of these areas. I love to go diving because it's so fun to swim with animals in their natural habitats. Let's go diving now and begin this underwater adventure. The first area that we're going to be exploring today is the rocky coastline. The rocky coastline is important because you're going to be able to see me go deeper and deeper and you'll see the change in the environments as we go farther down in the water. Notice how the light changes and notice how the animals react to the changes in this environment. By going diving, we are entering a different world, seeing sights and hearing sounds that we normally don't experience. Being in the water is like flying. Swimming along, we need to watch carefully because we might miss seeing an animal or plant that might be of interest. Seeing a starfish in the distance, let's swim closer. Picking the starfish up, notice the ridges on its top surface. And then, turning it over, notice its feet that are used to move and cling to a surface. We are looking at the tips of its arms because this is where its primitive eyes are located. Continuing to explore, what are we going to find next? Swimming in this area, notice the current in the water that makes it challenging to move forward. But it's a surge that carries food and nutrients in this ecosystem. One animal that has shown the ability to adapt to this challenging environment is the crab. The species that we are studying is the Jonah crab. Seeing us as a predator, the crab tries to escape. Picking this crab up to study it, notice how agile it is. What other characteristics of this animal do you think enables it to survive in challenging conditions? Swimming along, notice how light is penetrating the water, and the colors of the underwater vegetation change. Each trip underwater is exciting, because we can find something new that we've never seen before. This is the first time that we've seen a small eel-like fish called a rock gunnel. When first entering the undersea world, you don't know what to expect. It becomes quickly apparent that as we dive beneath the surface, we are entering a totally different world and it is not far from where we live. One of the characteristics of the rocky coastline are the vertical rock formations. The colors that we can see in the New England marine ecosystem can be amazing. The colorful sponges are really cool to see as we swim by them. Every once in a while, 
it is fun to turn over a rock and look around. Green sea urchins usually live in this area, and we have yet to see one. But we've found one now. Swimming close to the surface, the surging water is felt. If we aren't careful, we will be swept against the rocks. An animal that is found in this churning, dynamic environment is a solitary starfish. Heading back toward the bottom, let's continue to look for plants or animals that can be of interest. Notice again how there is less light as we go deeper. Two hermit crabs lie on a rock as we pass by. This area of the coastline where it meets the bottom is fascinating to explore. See the school of small fish swimming close to the vegetation, most likely for food and protection. The plant you are looking at is called kelp. Up until now, we haven't found much of this plant in this area. Exploring this area, a small starfish is seen as it lies on the kelp. It would be expected to find an animal such as this in a more quiet, secluded area of the cove. It's time to swim to another location in the cove. It's been fun exploring this rocky coastline area. I want to come back. How about you? We're also going to be looking at an area called the shallow rocky area. Here, it's quiet, more protected than the rocky coastline, and also, too, you notice that there are many, many more animals competing for space. This vehicle is leaving the station. Please hold on. Swimming along in this area, the water is shallower than along the rocky coastline. There is more light and less current. Seeing us swim into its territory, the green crab tries to escape along the rocky crevices. Swimming up to a small crab, it becomes apparent that this area is almost like an underwater nursery where small animals can grow. While a larger crab lies between the rocks, perhaps waiting to prey on an animal that comes into its territory. Although we are becoming familiar with the cove, we still need to check the compass to see where we're going. We come to a rock where there are numerous barnacles, and whelks are feeding on them. Observing this barnacle-encrusted rock, we can understand the competition for space is fierce, and if an animal is not a barnacle, it is out of luck. Let's take a moment again to check the gauges. Checking the amount of air left in the tank, turning over the console and looking at the depth gauge, and then at the compass. We see an individual whelk feeding on barnacles, but looking closely, the barnacles are feeding as well as small wisp-like arms reach out to feed on the plankton floating in the water. And these periwinkles feeding on algae that is covering the rock. A small flounder comes into view. Notice how it blends into the environment with camouflage so that it can hide from its enemies. Seeing another small flounder, notice how its colors can change to blend in with the environment. 